came out nicely out of this very embarrassing situation where, you know, both of us <laughs> buy the latest uh, fashion trend and find the <laughs> same thing. You have matching pants as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so, it sounds to me as if the, my voice is too amplified. If you end up thinking the same, let me know. Uh, before I start, I have to apologize. I, I spent the last uh, 18 hours or so mostly sneezing uh, because I have a cold. Um, so first of all, if you see me crying, it's not because of the class. Uh, at least I hope. And, uh, and second, I hope I'll manage. Uh, so what I'd like to talk about is uh, topological quantum computation. There are some overlaps with the earlier talk on black holes. The two talks are in English. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I was hoping no one would object to my characterization of myself as English speaking. Uh, but, but, you know, overall it's a, it's a kind of a different subject. Uh, so, so uh, I'm, in some sense, taking you back to the quantum computation uh, uh, talks of uh, David Vincenzo and Barbara Terral and, and others. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, let's remind ourselves what, what, what is it that we want to have a quantum computer. We, we'd like to have some uh, quantum system that has uh, some states. Uh, we'd like it to be isolated from the rest of the world because we'd like to have a finite set of states. We'd like to initialize this state in some, quantum, in some quantum wave function. We'd like to evolve it in a way that uh, is determined by the calculation we want to uh, carry out, and then we'd like to read out. Now, so what's so complicated? Why, why don't we have, uh, you know, five of them by now? Uh, of course, the, the problem is uh, that we need to be precise in the way we execute the transformations the, the uh, time evolution on our system, and we need to uh, be able to isolate it from the external world. And those two things uh, seem to be very, very difficult to do. In particular, the second thing is what we call, uh, we'd like to avoid decoherence. Now, it's very hard to avoid decoherence. Decoherence uh, emerges out of the interaction between uh, the, uh, our system and uh, the rest of the world. Uh, due to this interaction, the, uh, uh, due to this coupling, eventually the system loses coherence, and there's some uh, decoherence time, uh, or decoherence rate, sometimes uh, denoted by tau phi or whatever subscript you want, which typically goes like the temperature to some power alpha. Uh, this this uh, algebraic dependence on temperature is... Uh, almost always a consequence of phase space, of, of uh, uh, how many states is it that our system talks to uh, the environment. Uh, the the, the uh, higher the temperature is, the more uh, excitation modes the environment has that interact with our system, and the dependence is uh, algebraic. Topological quantum computation attempts to uh, uh, overcome this limit, to have a decoherence uh, rate, that goes to zero uh, faster than uh, uh, algebraic as the temperature uh, gets low. So we, what we would like to have is one over tau phi that's proportional, uh, that goes down to zero exponentially fast. That's proportional to uh, e to the minus sum just, just because of units, uh, t naught over t. So that uh, as temperature goes to zero, uh, we, we would have a very fast suppression of decoherence. Now, that's what we want. You don't always get what you want. Um, mostly, uh, I think a, a much more realistic uh, estimate to what we could uh, uh, hope to achieve is this to some power. But since uh, this, uh, this ratio in typical systems can be very small, Putting it in the, into the exponent, even if, uh, if here we have a, a, a alpha, a, 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 let's call it alpha prime, alpha prime will be smaller than one, like one half or one third, typically. 
uh, e even even under these conditions, this uh, can li uh, can in 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 a good day if we manage to implement this vision of topological quantum computation, this will get us to uh, very long decoherence times. So I, I I want to start by this because I, I I want to start by this because I want to emphasize it's not that we are talking here about a decoherence free system. It's not that we solved once and for all the solution of uh, decoherence in quantum computers. But it's, if it works, it's a very uh, impressive uh, uh, improvement over any, uh, any of these other schemes. Okay, now what is it? So this is what we'd like to achieve. What, what is it that uh, will uh, let us do that? So we will have a quantum system. It will have a set of states. Uh, but but it, it, there will be some characteristics that will be unique. First, not that unique, but uh, uh, but very important here is that there will be an energy gap. In fact, the discrete spectrum is something that you find in all implementations of quantum uh, computation. But here, the, there will be an energy gap that doesn't come out of uh, size quantization, uh, but comes out of a many-body nature of uh, of the system we, we're talking about. Second, and most important, is that we would like to have a degeneracy of the ground state. So, uh, this is the crucial point. We would like to have a set of ground states that are degenerate, um, and, uh, uh, and, and from that we will start. Now, the genesis in quantum mechanics are not uh, news, right? The first uh, spectrum that most of us studied of the hydrogen atom uh, is, is, a, is a spectrum where there are the genesis, you know, the, the uh, coming out of the uh, angular momentum commuting with the Hamiltonian. But those are the genesis that are very fragile. They come out of rotational symmetry. So once we break rotational symmetry, uh, by putting the atom on a lattice, by making, uh, bringing it close to some, some uh, perturbation. Once we do that, we lose this degeneracy, and we split it. Here we're going to have something very different. And I'm going to uh, uh, exemplify it in, in a few minutes on one particular case, the simplest of all cases. Uh, 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 it's for the experts, it's the Kitayev chain. Uh, and, and we will see from that how we get uh, the genesis and what protects us from lifting the degeneracies. And we'll see that there will be degeneracies that cannot be lifted by local perturbations. So breaking, is, they will not come out of a local symmetry. This will be crucial. Then what we have to do is, we, you know, like all the uh, uh, quantum computers, we, we would like to uh, take a state and evolve it in time. But usually you evolve things in time because you have a spectrum and there are energies and there are these phase factors, e to the i energy times time, which make uh, the, the state change. Now here we are not going to have that, because all the, the ground states are, are degenerate, so we have all the ground state will be degenerate, then there will be a gap, and then uh, you know, all hell will break loose. We will uh, uh, work only with this, uh, 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 only with this set of states, and the entire time evolution will be a time evolution of a wave function that's built uh, exclusively from, from this uh, set of states. So the dynamics cannot come out of energy differences because there aren't any. Uh, so uh, where will the, the dynamics come from? I'll tell you that in a second, but let me just uh, a comment. This, this is the energy gap. And this is what will uh, give rise to this uh, exponential dependence of the, of the decoherence time that I mentioned before. Because uh, at any finite temperature, there will be an exponentially small uh, probability for uh, uh, excitations for, for the system to be in this uh, excited uh, state. So this is what protects us. Uh, now, how shall we introduce dynamics? So the, uh, the Hamiltonian of the system uh, will depend on parameter. That's no, no big news. All quantum, you know, when we deal with trapped ions or with uh, uh, the superconducting qubits that uh, David was talking about last week, um, we, we, we apply all kinds of perturbations, so the Hamiltonian has parameters which we control by our will. So the Hamiltonian here will be, uh, will depend on some set of parameters R, uh, which will be, uh, which we will assume to be under our control. Now, 
we will uh, put some time dependence into this uh, uh, set of parameters. For any given time, the, 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 the generosity will not be lifted. But, there will, but uh, uh, dynamics will be uh, induced not, by, not just by th this e to the minus i e t that I mentioned, but by uh, the, the Berry phase, basically, by the uh, change in the uh, set of ground states as a function of these parameters. So the initial wave function psi will evolve by uh, uh, standard quantum mechanics so by some unitary uh, time evolution, and this unitary time evolution will be the time ordered product of e to the i integral d l or, or, or e, 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 integral d t r dot of t dotted into psi god with respect, uh, with respect to our psi. Now, this psi is a set of the entire set of, is the set of ground state that we have. So this becomes a matrix whose size is the dimension of the ground state sub subspace. Uh, this will be, this is how we will uh, introduce uh, dynamics, yes. Uh, just read it out. Uh, e to the i, integral over time dotted into r dot, the, the, the velocity by which we change these uh, parameters, uh, dotted into this psi uh, sandwich with the gradient of psi with respect to r. So we, we, we will take the system into a, a trajectory in a parameter space uh, that will introduce dynamics. Okay. Uh, now it, it will turn out that by the time we uh, brought the parameters back to their original values, we will get some unitary transformation that will be uh, highly robust. And it will be highly robust because it will depend only on the topology of the trajectory that we carry out. It will not depend on the details of R as a function of T, the details of the traje trajectory in parameter space that we will uh, implement. It will depend only on the topology of that trajectory. So, you know, if, if I'm supposed to that, take that trajectory and I uh, shake a little bit, um, as long as the topology will not change, and we will uh, define that more precisely uh, later on, as long as the topology will not change, the unitary transformation will not change. So there will be a stability, because first, uh, the degeneracy the, uh, the here is stable, and second, the, the, what, what does give dynamics to the system will uh, depend only on topology and not uh, on uh, dynamics or, or the dynamics of this trajectory or on uh, geo the geometry of this trajectory. So uh, 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 there, are two, there are two psi's here, two ground states, i and j. Yeah, is this what you meant? So yeah, so, so it's a matrix, it's, it's a... Uh, uh, and, and you have to time order it, so for, for any time slice you get the matrix, and the entries to that matrix are the, uh, the ground states, right? Um, so so uh, that, that's the idea. Now, uh, before, before I uh, go to an example that will make it concrete, let me just say the Hamiltonian, just, just to, to give a, still a schematic description of the Hamiltonian that uh, governs this system. The Hamiltonian we have a, a subspace of uh, subspace of ground states whose energy we can fix to be zero, and it, it uh, and then it will have an, a, a set of excited states. So imagine that we diagonalize it. There will be all these ground states that have an energy zero, and then there will be excited states that will pretty much form a continuum and will go all the way for to infinity. Now, if I come and make perturbations, what we will see is that you know I come. Uh, and, and uh, turn a cell phone on next to the system or, or, or turn light, whatever, uh, these perturbations will have zero matrix element in this subspace. This will be the crucial thing. They will have matrix element here, here, and here. But, uh, 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 and of course, in some perturbation theory, they will introduce matrix element here, but those will be exponentially small. Now it will not be an exponent in terms of the temperature, but a, a, an exponent in terms of distances, which I'll define soon. Yes. You, you, the, the, the crucial thing is you want to avoid exciting uh, above the gap. So yes, 
in that sense it should be small. Uh, now, of course, you know, this is uh, physics, not math. So, when we say degeneracy, it's not in a mathematical sense. We can start uh, negotiating. Uh, there will be exponentially small splittings, which I'll, I'll mention later on. Uh, and we will need to be fast enough so that we can neglect these exponentially small splittings. Other questions? Uh, okay, so, so uh, uh, I think all this, uh, you know, when there are no questions, you never know whether it's because uh, everything's clear or everything's not. Uh, so I think if it's, if, if it's the other possibility, uh, an example will help. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so to, to show an example, basically there, there are two uh, agents that work for us. Uh, in, in, in our dealing with uh, physical systems, and it's uh, superconductivity and magnetic field. So uh, I'm going to start with a, 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 an example that's all uh, superconductivity. So I'd like to uh, introduce, uh, to, to make a few words of introduction of superconductivity. And the reason I want to do that is that there will be very little overlap between the superconductivity I'm talking about and the superconductivity David talked about last week. He was talking about, at least in the lecture I was uh, attending, he talked about uh, superconductivity looking at the dynamics of the order parameter, of the phase uh, and magnitude of the order parameter. I'd like to look at the uh, fermionic dynamics. So, so let me uh, uh, explain uh, what, uh, how this comes out. So uh, an introduction to superconductivity with uh, an apology to uh, uh, those of you who, who know that by heart. We have, a, you know, it's an electronic system. The Hamiltonian is uh, uh, given to us uh, and is hardly negotiable. There will be a, a, a kinetic term. Uh, we, we will put the, the system on a lattice. It uh, will uh, be useful and, and, and make life easy uh, at some point. So we, we will have a sum of lattice sites. There will be hopping terms, which will make an electron jump from a site i from a site j to a site i. Uh, this, uh, uh, of course, there, w there will be also uh, uh, spin indices, and this t in principle could uh, could be uh, could depend both on i and j and on, on spins. Uh, indices can be put in. Uh, quite easily, but uh, they are not important here. Uh, and then we have an interaction term uh, where, where we have uh, uh, V, I, J, K, L, and we uh, scatter, uh, it's a, it's a two-electron uh, term, and, and lots of spinning, they say they're not that important. So, so let me uh, neglect all the uh, complicating factors. Superconductivity, first of all, as you know, comes out of an experiment. Um, is, uh, uh, so we know it exists. The question is only how to describe it. And it turns out, and this is the unbelievable ingenuity of uh, the BCS theory, but in Cooper and Schiffer, it turns out that superconductivity comes out of the fact that there is an expectation value to an operator uh, CI, CI dagger, CK dagger. There is an expectation value in the ground state of an operator that doesn't conserve the number of particles. Um, it's, it sounds uh, either stupid or, or amazingly clever. It turns out it's the second. Uh, so so, so uh, that's, the, the, uh, that's an expectation value. It's, it's uh, uh, usually uh, called delta star. And uh, without the, the daggers, it will be called delta. And, uh, the, 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 and, and now let me put in also some sigma and sigma prime, so that because uh, I'd like to say a few words about them now. Uh, and and now there, are, there are many types of superconductors, low TC, high TC, this and that. And, and they differ by, by what kind of an order parameter they have. Uh, so uh, two, two cases which are of interest here. Uh, uh, one case, the most abundant one, is the S-wave superconductor. And, and in an S-wave superconductor, uh, uh, delta is proportional to uh, delta IK. So uh, 
the, the pairing takes place on, on the same site, and the delta function of sigma and minus sigma prime. So spin up and spin down on the same site uh, form a, an order parameter. Uh, the, 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 the other case that I'm going to uh, think about is a P-wave, or, or more precisely a spin-polarized P-wave superconductor. Uh, and, and, and in that case, uh, I and K are nearest neighbors, and sigma equals sigma prime. Of course, if sigma equals sigma prime, they cannot be on the same site, and it turns out they are uh, on nearest neighboring sites. And uh, you'll see later why, why this is called the P-wave and this is called the S-wave, uh, or maybe you see it by now. In any case, the, the important thing is that by making this assumption that these two form a, an order parameter, uh, we reduce the Hamiltonian back into a, a quadratic Hamiltonian. Because if we, we will replace it now by a sum of i and j, t, c dagger c, and, and, and let me be schematic, plus delta, uh, and it's all uh, lots of sums. Delta C dagger C dagger plus delta star C C. So this is now an Hamiltonian that's quadratic. And, and it turns out it, it uh, describes superconductivity extremely well. This is called Bogolyub of the Gen. Hamiltonian. Um, and and it, it basically is a way of formulating the the BCS story. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. So how do you deal with this actually? <laughs> uh, okay. There there are various ways. You know, it's a it's a big rug here, and you can sweep things under the rug in many from in many directions. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the, 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 the physics of it is that this is a bosonic operator. And that uh, uh, you, you think about the superconductor as a Bose condensate of uh, pairs of electrons, each of which is a boson. Now, but, but then you can ask, OK, but, uh, but where's the, the um, particle conservation? Uh, how do we enforce particle conservation? So one thing which will actually be very relevant to experiments is you can think about this delta as a source of pairs of electrons that's outside of your system. So, and, and the way it's done in real life is you take an electronic system that's not superconducting and you just glue it to a superconductor. That's called the proximity effect. The system becomes superconducting just because it's close to something that has such an order parameter. But that, of course, is sweeping under the rug because then you'll ask me, but in that... Big superconductor, how do you understand that? If you want to enforce uh, uh, charge conservation, what happens is you average over the phase of this. Uh, and there's a procedure to do that and get a BCS wave function that's uh, of a constant uh, particle number. Um, so, so that's how you do it. Uh, other, yes? Right. Exactly. Exactly. The volume of the Gen Hamiltonian is a mean field approximation to uh, the BCS Hamiltonian, uh, and and it turns out like all mean fields in certain limits, it's perfect, and in other cases, it's almost perfect, and uh, that's the we, we will assume we're in those limits. Other questions? Yes. Right. But suppose that the universe is cold enough to become a superconductor. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess the expectation value of the delta would be zero, but still we have a fluctuation of delta, like the expectation value of delta square. 
How can we explain that? So, so, so um, you don't need to go. There, there are cheaper ways of doing that. Uh, you just take a, a, a small superconducting particle and, and circle it with an insulator so that it, a, a, pla a place where electrons cannot get into. And then it's, it's a superconductor with a fixed number of particles. This, this is done routinely. Then delta doesn't have an expectation value, but its magnitude has an expectation value. The phase fluctuates, right? The phase will fluctuate in this, uh, in this case. Okay? More questions? Okay, so, so uh, this was superconductivity. Now let's get back to uh, uh, this ground state degeneracy that I wanted to show to you. So I'm going to now tell you the story of the, of the Kitayev chain, which is an, an example, the simplest example, to, uh, to uh, the, the physics that I want to illustrate. The Kitayev chain uh, is named after Kitayev because of a piece of work he, he did where he introduced this. My understanding is that there are other papers which are more or less contemporary uh, where similar physics is described. Um, but, uh, you know, giving a blackboard talk, I, I don't have uh, the references sorted out properly. Uh, in any case, Damilton, so uh, this will be a 1D system. Uh, there will be spinless electrons. How can electrons be spinless? You just put a very strong Zeeman field and polarize them uh, in such a way that it costs a lot of energy for the spin being uh, uh, for the spin to be uh, inverted. And it has an Hamiltonian that's uh, uh, sum over nearest neighbors. So let, let's say sum over i. Uh, T C i dagger C i plus one. So you can have a hopping from i plus 1 to i plus the uh, emission conjugate, which will be uh, c i plus 1 dagger c i plus uh, superconductivity. Now I'm going to, since, since the, the electrons have no spin, uh, the, the only possibility out of the two I introduced to I have to use is a pure superconductor. So I'm going to have a sum of uh, i here as well. Uh, and now it will be c i dagger c i plus 1 dagger plus, uh, now we need to take the emission conjugate of that. This will be Ci plus 1 uh, uh, Ci, but I, I'd like to keep this order, so I'm going to write it with a minus sign, uh, Ci plus 1 Ci. Okay? Uh, oops, Ci, Ci plus 1. When I was in uh, primary school, the teacher under these situations uh, used to say, I wanted to check whether you were alert. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Uh, so, so, so this is a, a Hamiltonian. And now we will diagonalize it because it's a quadratic Hamiltonian. But uh, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult, it has too many parameters. So, so uh, let's uh, simplify it and let's just say that t equals delta. This is uh, motivated by uh, my desire to be simple. There's no other, uh, I, I don't have any, any good excuse for that, but uh, uh, I will explain later that this is a field of physics where uh, making simplified, uh, 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 simplified assumptions like that, uh, you, you, you don't lose anything. Uh, so the Hamiltonian is now uh, what's written there with t equals delta. Now what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to change, uh, to, to make a transformation of coordinates. Uh, uh, Daniel in the previous uh, talk uh, uh, showed to me how uh, nice it may be. So uh, uh, transformation of coordinates will be like that. Um, we will uh, define gamma i as a ci uh, dagger plus ci, and the eta i as a 1 over i ci dagger minus ci. Uh, I think that's what I want to do, but uh, maybe a, a more constructive way of doing that will be the following. Uh, I'm going to write this as a sum of uh, i. 
I take T out because it's, uh, uh, there's only one scale now. And now we just group uh, uh, variables. We have CI dagger times uh, this plus that. CI plus 1 plus CI plus 1 dagger. Uh, and then we take, uh, maybe I do want to keep this in the other order. Um, maybe I do. So, so I'll take uh, uh, CI plus 1. Uh, I, I, I'll take CI out now. Do I have it right? Just a second. So uh, I took CI out and have this, and then I take uh, minus, uh, I'm going to get minus CI times CI plus 1 plus CI plus 1 dagger. Uh, and how exactly I do that, uh, I leave it to you to check. Uh, so this will be overall the uh, sum of uh, all the I's of uh, I, because of this I, and then uh, eta I, gamma I plus 1. Okay, this is just, uh, you see, you saw what I'm doing. I just uh, take things out of uh, uh, brackets and so on, and uh, uh, group, group them in terms of these new variables, and uh, that's what I get. Oh, okay. Uh, Good point, I should have said that. These are electronic operators, these are fermionic operators. So CI and CI plus, uh, and CI dagger anti-commute. And all the others, uh, uh, excuse me, they have an anti-commutation relation of, of one. And everyone else, CI, C, uh, J, uh, with or without daggers. Uh, anti-commute for, for uh, J not equal to I. Okay. Yeah. Probably somewhere I, I did miss a minus, but uh, if, if you just do that, that's what you'll get. And, and let me not uh, dwell on the minus signs. Okay, we, we can look at it later. Uh, other questions? So, uh, did anyone find, find where I made a mistake here? If I did? I didn't. That's unlikely. <laughs> uh, in any case, this is how the Hamiltonian looks like. Now, uh, I goes from 1 to n. Uh, uh, or, or we, we have n sites, so I will go from 1 to n minus 1, because this uh, is limited by n. So, so you see that we have... Uh, uh, the eta i's, all of them uh, appearing in the Hamiltonian, the gamma i's, all of them appearing in the Hamiltonian, except two, th uh, except two operators. Excuse me. So we have, uh, uh, okay, we have all of them appearing except of gamma 1 which doesn't appear here because we start from gamma 2, and eta n. So the Hamiltonian, in fact, commutes with gamma 1 and commutes with eta n. Now, diagonalizing this Hamiltonian is very simple because uh, uh, these terms all commute with one another. These operators, i, eta i, gamma i plus 1, are emission operators. And if you square them to, if you square them, if you look at i, eta i, gamma i plus 1, and square this operator, you just, and you make the, the calculation, and you normalize properly, which I'm not sure I did, you get 1. Uh, so, so these operators, in, and that means that the, the eigenvalues of uh, this operator, i, eta i, gamma i plus 1, can be either the eigenvalues eigenvalues are, are either plus or minus 1 
which means, of course, that in the ground state, you want all of them to be uh, minus 1 if t is positive or plus 1 if t is negative. In any case, two operators, excuse me, two operators commute with the Hamiltonian, which means also which means the Hamiltonian commutes with a, a i gamma 1 eta n. So now we have, so the Hamiltonian, the energy of the, uh, or the ground state, the energy of the system will not care whether this operator is in a state of plus 1 or minus 1. So we have two degenerate ground states that are distinguished by the quantum number i gamma 1 eta n, which may be either plus 1 or minus 1. Okay? All the others are, are uh, constrained by, by the energy cost to be in, uh, let's say, if t is positive, to be in the minus 1 eigenstate. But this particular one doesn't appear here. Okay? So, so we have a, a, a two-fold degeneracy of the ground state. Now, fine, as we said uh, when we just started, a degeneracy of the ground state is something that we are very familiar with. I need to show to you now that this is not just a fine-tuned model where there is such a degeneracy. And of course, I did fine-tune it. I said T equals delta. I didn't have a chemical potential, by the way. Uh, I, I, what I took was a very, very... Uh, you know, designer kind of uh, uh, a problem. Uh, but I'd like to explain now that it tells us something very, very general. So to do that, what I, what, what I did now was uh, I uh, uh, diagonalized the Bogolubov of the Jana Miltonian. Uh, that was so easy that I could more or less up to sign that maybe I screwed up. Uh, I could more or less diagonalize it on the board. More generally, if we want to diagonalize a, a Bogolubov of the Jena Miltonian, if we want to diagonalize them, that means it's a quadratic Hamiltonian. So what we need to do is we need to find a, a, an operator gamma, gamma dagger, uh, the, whose commutation with the a commutation relation with the Hamiltonian will be e times gamma dagger. Why? Because then if we apply both on the ground state, we will get another, another state. Uh, we will find that the energy of uh, the Hamiltonian operating on uh, gamma dagger times the ground state will be uh, the energy minus the ground state energy times the uh, E times the ground state, uh, 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 excuse me, times the gamma dagger times zero. So this will be a way, and I hope I got the signs right. Uh, I think I won this. Anyway, you, you, you'll figure it, you'll figure it out. Uh, so so uh, uh, once I solve this Hamiltonian, you you will in a second see why I don't care about the sign. Uh, once I solve this equation, once I find such an operator, uh, I I. Uh, uh, found a, a, an operator that will uh, uh, increase the, the energy of the state by E. Now, since I want the ground state degeneracy, ground state degeneracy means that I should, uh, I should find an, an, an uh, operator, gamma dagger, that will commute with the Hamiltonian. Once I have that, and indeed I found one here, or I found two here, <coughs> Once I have that, I will have a uh, ground state degeneracy. I will still need, by the way, to count correctly the number of degenerate ground states, but th we will see that soon. So, so that's what we need to find out. Now, how do we solve this equation? So uh, the Bogolubov of the Hamiltonian in general can be written as a uh, C dagger I C I H I J 
CJC uh, Jdega. Right, because that will exhaust, th this will be a matrix, we will talk about its dimension in a second, and that will exhaust all the uh, uh, possible quadratic Hamiltonian that have terms of the type C dagger C, uh, C C, C dagger C dagger, and uh, uh, C C dagger. Okay, and the Hamiltonian, this Hij, will, will uh, f first about its dimension, uh, this i is um, an index of the uh, site, and we are going to have, uh, you see that we have all the sites here, a, a dagger and undagger, so all together we have twice as many uh, entries as we have site, and if we have spin, then it will be four times as many and so on. So, Hij will be an even dimensional Now, to find such a, an operator, yes? So how do you show this degeneracy is uh, stable against uh, perturbation? Is that it enough if it's non-local or are there... I, I'm getting there. Okay. The, uh, that's what I'm heading to. It will come out of two properties of this Hamiltonian. One is that it's even dimensional, and the other is that it has a symmetry of the spectrum with respect to zero. Combined together, these two will tell you that there's an even number of zero energy states. And that will give the stability, because you will, it, you will have to still work on that, to, on using these properties, but you will have to create two excitations at zero energy and make them very far away from one another. Then, or, or an even number of uh, zero energy excitations and make them very far away from one another. Then, since you know the number must be even, you know that if you perturb one of them, it cannot move from zero energy, because having it moved, Will, will mean that you, you are left with an odd number. So once you specially separate them away from one another, uh, given that we know, we, we, we know how to apply only local perturbations to an Hamiltonian, you protect them. Okay? Other questions? So, so this is an even dimensional matrix, and uh, uh, most general operator that we can think of uh, for this gamma, at least most, most general single particle operator, uh, will be a sum over i, a i, or, or to follow the BCS notation, u i, c i plus v i, c i dagger. Uh, and finding, solving this equation of the commutator of the Hamiltonian with uh, being uh, proportional to the energy and so on, uh, amounts to solving what u and v are. And when you substitute this into that equation, make sure you have all the signs correctly, what you find is that you need to multiply um, uh, this Hamiltonian Hij multiplied by the vector u vector v and get the energy times u and v. Now, uh, what's, the, what's in this Hamiltonian? So this Hamiltonian has four blocks. The blocks that connect the CI dagger CI, those will be normal blocks, not superconducting blocks. They will be the H0, the, the, the basically tight binding term that we had before. Uh, the the, the uh, off-diagonal blocks will be those that connect C dagger, C dagger, and CC. So they will be the delta and delta star. And it turns out, because of commutation relations and stuff, that here you will have minus H0. Now, this, such, an, uh, such a matrix, a matrix of that form, will have a spectrum that's uh, symmetric with respect to zero. And if you have a spectrum that's symmetric with respect to zero, and a, a total dimension that is even, that means you must, a, 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 the number of zero energy solutions to, to this equation must be even.
must be even. Now, I should say, I'm not telling you that it's never going to happen that you find an odd number of zero energy solutions to this Hamiltonian. The only thing I'm telling you is that when it happens, it means you made a mistake. <laughs> and this is a piece of my history. Uh, so the, the number of solutions must be even. Now, that means, as I said before, but let me repeat it because it's so, so uh, important, that if we have such solutions which are localized in space, and uh, gamma 1 and eta n were very localized in space, right? Both of them were localized solutions uh, uh, to, to this equation of zero energy, uh, because both of them commuted with the Hamiltonian, gamma 1 and eta n. They were in the limit of large n. They were very far away from one another. another they were localized. So when they are localized, there is no way you can make one of them move away from zero energy uh, by, by applying a perturbation to, to it, because the other one is out of your influence, and you cannot be left with an odd number. So this is the stability. It's not based on, a, on the, the a symmetry point of t equals delta. It's not based on a, a, you see what it's based on, on, on a glo uh, some global properties of this Hamiltonian. That's an even dimensional matrix, and that it has a spectrum that uh, uh, is symmetric with respect to zero. That for every energy E, you have a, sta uh, you have a solution with a energy minus E. And, and the way to see that is, you know, take, take uh, this equation and just emission conjugate it. And you will see that this, be uh, this gets a minus sign. So gamma dagger will be a solution with minus E, which means that if you V... If, the vector, if you found a vector uv that has a solution e, that has an energy e, there is another solution with v star u star, the, the emission conjugate of this, with v star u star that has an energy minus e. Which means, by the way, that you find the, if you find a localized solution that has an energy e, and it's a single one, then when you, com when you emission conjugate it, you must get it itself. Because I said, if you found one that's it's a single one in a localized region, it doesn't have any partner. Then if you uh, mission conjugate it, you'll get another zero energy solution that's localized. So you'll, you must get itself back. Uh, uh, which means that it was, an, em emission, it, it was an, an emission operator to start with. So zero energy... Localized solutions solutions are uh, or, or satisfy obey gamma dagger equals gamma. Now that was, by the way, the case with the, the little gammas that I uh, defined before and the little etas that I defined before. They were emission. Now, they are uh, uh, fermions uh, in the sense that they anti-commute with one another. Of uh, uh, but of course, uh, or not, maybe not so, of course, but uh, uh, they are not conventional fermions because an emission of, you know, a, a, a fermion, a, a, a complex fermion, the fermions we, we are used to, we know and love, they, uh, the, the C, C dagger that we have there satisfy that C dagger squared equals c squared equals zero. This is known as the Pauli principle. But c dagger plus c squared is not, is not zero, and it's a number. It's uh, one, if, the, if my normalization is correct. It's one. So, so uh, uh, these type of operators, they are fermions, but they are not conventional fermions, and they are named after Majorana. And those are the Majorana fermions. Mm -hmm. This property of being symmetric about zero is not robust with respect to generic perturbation. It is. Be, 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 uh, because it's not, it's not like particle hole symmetry of the Fermi surface or something like that. Yeah. It's particle hole symmetry of this. It's the fact that this is H0 and minus H0. Uh, so, you know, you may have a Fermi velocity that changes with the energy or something, uh, which will make the system by itself 
not particle holes symmetric in that sense that you you think of but this this particle hole symmetry it's the fact that here you get h0 here you get minus h0 that comes out of uh, anti commuting things here to bring it to to uh, to this form but well, we could add perturbations that are quadratic for example that are not quadratic yeah uh, and, and you can ask, okay, so what happened there? Suppose that I had a perturbation that's not quadratic. Uh, I don't close the energy gap, which, as I will say very soon, will break the rules of the game. I don't close the energy gap, and uh, uh, I don't uh, bring them close to one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to lose them. I will stay with the, the ground state degeneracy. It's not going to be broken, but... Uh, uh, the, the operators will not be single particle operators anymore. So the Majorana operators will not commute with your four, with your four operator perturbation anymore. But there will be another operator that will be a zero energy. You're claiming the perturbation will dress the Majorana Exactly, the exactly. Exactly, yeah. Uh, 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 ladies first. Uh, <laughs> is there any real time reversal is playing in this model? Excuse me? Any real time reversal? At, at, at this, at this uh, problem, not at all. Because uh, I started, okay, the, the, I mean, the original is erased by now, but I started from spinless electrons. So I had to put a magnetic field to uh, spin polarize them. So this is not time versus symmetric. Now, but since you asked, let me uh, say one more sentence about that. Uh, you, you can say, well, suppose that I have solutions, uh, zero energy solutions to the Hamiltonian that are very close to one another. So, so they will not be stable against perturbations because you can apply a perturbation that will act on both of them. And in principle, they will split from zero energy. They can split from zero energy and, and still keep the number of zero energy solutions even, just reduce it by two, right? So you, you, you have two zero energy solutions. This is energy equals zero. And you apply some perturbation and, and it goes like that. The symmetry with respect to zero is conserved and you lost the two terms. Now... Uh, and, and this is possible when they are close to one another, because we can address them both. But, but sometimes, in this situation, you will be protected by time versus symmetry. If, the two, if there is time versus symmetry, then the two may become as partners of one another. And then, and then uh, uh, they cannot split until you break that protection. So it's a different type of protection, obviously much weaker. But, it's a, but if, if it works, it works. Uh, you see. Okay, yes, Paul. Why was your um, condition for the ground state degeneracy on the product of the gamma 1 eta n rather than the uh, Just by, by choice of... Uh, I didn't have to do that. Um, but you uh, a different uh, uh, No, uh, I could have said the, the following. I could have said... Let's have two. Uh, let's have uh, one ground state. H commutes with gamma one, right? So let, let's have a ground state for which uh, H on, the, on that particular ground state is is the ground state energy, and gamma one acting on that ground state. Since gamma one squared is one, it can be either plus one or one. I'll take an, an eigenstate. I'll choose. So this will be uh, uh, let's say minus one times the uh, uh, gamma 1 times the, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, times gamma 1 times the gamma state. So, so it's an eigenstate of gamma 1. Now, uh, uh, sorry, no gamma 1. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you found the right answer. <laughs> but I did apologize from the very beginning. Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, n n now, now let's multiply by uh, eta n on both sides, uh, and, and let's see whether uh, eta n. So, uh, first of all, eta n multiplied by the ground state will be a ground state too, right? Because you multi you you apply the Hamiltonian. It's another ground state. Is it an orthogonal? Is it one orthogonal to this? You 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 can see that it is because uh, um, you apply gamma one to this, and you'll find plus one, right? So, so, so you found two states, okay? Um, other questions? Yes. Right. 
Exactly. So, so now what will happen if I change delta and t are not the same as one another, uh, the chemical potential is not zero, uh, and uh, I start playing with uh, the first order of the calculation becomes messier, but what's more important is, as it, just as you said, the number of the energy states cannot change because I, as long as n is very, very large. Uh, but the, the, the wave function can definitely change. Here it was, uh, in that particular case, it was truly localized on one site. Now you'll get a, a tail and there will be an exponential overlap and therefore an exponential uh, splitting of the energies and ground state degeneracy will be two only up to an exponent. Uh, is it true that gamma squared is one? I just didn't try to uh, let's do that. So it's C plus C dagger times C plus C dagger. So C squared is zero, C dagger is, uh, squared is zero, and then we have C dagger C plus C C dagger. But, uh, as long as they are far away from one another, yeah, yeah. yes, why? Right. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. All these questions. Th this this is related to what John asked before. All these questions uh, uh, boil down to the same question. How stable is it? Okay, stable, stable, but how stable is it? Uh, I mean, clearly it's not stable for all conditions. So what, what should I do in order to get rid of these two eigenstates, two zero energy states? Uh, I can do uh, one of two things. I can make them overlap in space so, so, so that the local perturbation can operate in a region of space where they, uh, where they have support. In the limit of an infinite system, that will not uh, easily happen. And the second thing is I can close the energy gap. Because, of course, when I close the energy gap, zero energy and non-zero energy, they are all the same. So I can close the energy gap. Uh, but as long as I did not close the energy gap, I, I'm left with this ground state degeneracy. So this is the, exactly the stability that we want. Okay. I, is what? Uh, N equals two supersymmetric because you have two uh, uh, supersymmetric generators, gamma and theta. Mm -hmm. uh, what of them for me to have it wrong? No, there, there, there are many ways, including probably uh, yeah, this yeah, argument, yeah. To, uh, to show that it's uh, that there is a ground state degeneracy. The, 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 and and it, it is a very simple uh, example, I, I, I completely agree. What it shows is the general concept. The general concept is we, we want to have an Hamiltonian with localized operators that commute with the Hamiltonian, do not commute with one another, and therefore we have a ground state degeneracy. And, and, and that, that's, that's our starting point. And we will look for such Hamiltonians. This is the simplest one. It's a quadratic fermionic Hamiltonian. You cannot go, gi given that you cannot have a, a single fermion Hamiltonian, that's the simplest you can have. Uh, but okay, that it, it gives an example to the main concept. Yes. Is it also stable time it, you know, it's a spectrum. It's a, it's a statement about the spectrum. Ah, okay. um, now, you, but, uh, but you can ask, uh, at finite temperature is, so uh, there will be two ground states at finite temperature. What, one thing you can ask is uh, how easy it is to go from one ground state to another. And in fact, for this particular problem, you see exactly what you need to do to go from one ground state to another. You need to multi to operate with these operators gamma 1 or eta n, which are generally C dagger plus C. They are single electron operators, so you need to change the parity of the ground state. These two uh, degenerate ground states have different parity of the uh, electron uh, number. So to go from one to the other, you need to come from the outside with, you know, some STM tip or something, something that can supply to your single electrons. As long as you are within the superconductor, the ground state is, the, you are always in the same ground state. Okay? Uh, I, I, I should maybe uh, uh, make a, a side comment here. Uh, 
about uh, the, the so I, I, I did the prepare uh, uh, homework and, uh, and references. Um, so, so some of this stuff is in the homework. I'm, I'm solving part of your homework. Um, or I will be solving part of your homework. Uh, and about the references, what I wanted to say is that I give the, a few um, re uh, review papers, some of which I was involved in, some by other people, some review papers. Uh, and then I also uh, uh, give you a, a very comprehensive paper that summarizes the story, the personal story of my one himself. The, the guy be, be behind the fermion. Turns out it's a very complicated story. He disappeared someplace and uh, he boarded a ship in Sicily, if I remember correctly, never got to Naples and was seen in Argentina and Chile, maybe at the same time even. Uh, <laughs> so, so I... I, I, I What's I, the <laughs> He was the father of my one of them. So, so uh, uh, it's, it, it could be an interesting reading. So, so out of all of that, we have a one-dimensional system, a one-dimensional system with uh, some uh, Hamiltonian for which there is superconductivity and there is hoping. Right, this were, these were the, the building blocks of that Hamiltonian, superconductivity and hoping. And we got a two-fold degeneracy of the ground state. But we also uh, understood that to get from one ground state to the other, you need to actually bring an electron from the outside. The system itself, once isolated from the outside world, will not uh, be able to go from one ground state to the other. Now, uh, we, we, we also... Uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, if we change t and delta and mu, nothing will happen as long as we don't close the gap. When do we close the gap? So, uh, you know, this Hamiltonian is uh, uh, much easier to solve for uh, periodic boundary, like all Hamiltonians, for periodic boundary conditions than for a, a finite system. And, and if you solve it to... Uh, 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 by, by Fourier transforming, what you find is the Hamiltonian will uh, break up into Hamilton different Hamiltonians for different uh, k uh, wave vectors, and uh, its form is a uh, 2t cosine uh, ka minus mu. Now I add the chemical potential term, uh, and, and uh, delta sine ka. Uh, delta sine ka2, and uh, I make the assumption that delta is uh, is uh, real, and uh, and here it's minus h0 as we had before, so it will be mu minus cosine. I don't have the that the way it should be. Uh, mu minus 2t uh, cosine ka. And it's easy to uh, um, calculate the eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian. You find that they are uh, delta squared uh, sine squared ka, uh, 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 or maybe I'll write it as delta sine ka squared plus uh, 2t cosine ka minus mu squared, and square root of all of that, and you see that to close the gap, you need to make both terms zero. Now, this, this can easily be uh, made zero when uh, uh, k is zero, and this can be made zero only if mu is uh, plus or minus uh, 2t. So, the gap closes <laughs> at mu which is either plus or minus 2t, which is a, a, just a point. So at any, at any other value of the chemical potential, this will be a, a gapped system, and therefore stable with respect to its structure of zero energy solution. So what we saw that if we look at the uh, axis of mu, we solve the problem for mu equals zero, 
and we found the two marijuana fermions at the two ends of the wire. We saw that the gap closes at plus 2t and minus 2t, uh, and uh, reopens here and there. Now we can ask, are we going, so, so clearly since the gap doesn't close be, uh, uh, in this region, there must be marijuana fermions, marijuana end modes, um, within this region. We can ask what happens outside of this region, but since, you know, th then we can just uh, ask ourselves what happens when mu is very, very, very negative. That means there are no electrons in the, in the, in the system whatsoever, because the energy to, to uh, add them is, is, uh, is not within reach. Uh, either when, when mu is uh, on both sides of this, either the uh, band is completely uh, empty or it's completely full, in both cases, uh, the system is, uh, has no, uh, uh, you know, excitations are very, very costly. So, so there will be no, no end modes in, in, in any of these two regions. Which means, the, coming back now to the uh, finite uh, wire, that gives us a hint of what will happen if we try to perturb the uh, single... <laughs> that was interesting, let me do it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was your wave solution of an accelerated... Uh, <laughs> the one I didn't understand in the previous talk. <laughs> Uh, so, 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 uh, uh, what happens in, in our finite system now, if we try, if, if we put it, we put it at the mu equals zero, delta equals t, we have the two marijuana modes, and we now try to put up this one by, let's say, making the chemical potential negative and negative and negative. Eventually, there will not, it will be impossible to have an electron here. It will, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, uh, part of the wire into an insulator. So you see what I'm doing. I will just push the, the end mode inside into the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drying out this part of the wire by making the chemical potential way outside of the band. And uh, I, uh, as a consequence, the end mode will move to here. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thanks for the comment. Uh, what, what I'm doing now is I'm going to make mu as a function of x be, you know, zero here, and then, and then I make it very, very negative here. So mu as a function of x will be uh, zero here and very negative here. And well, you know, minus two t is here. So, so uh, basically I made this part of the wire empty. Uh, and, and therefore the only thing that can happen is that the end mode, there must be two of them, I didn't touch this other one, so the end mode will come here. So, so another thing I could imagine doing is now come with a, uh, this idea, now that I clarified that mu is a function of position, I can uh, do it again and again, and I can have uh, uh, mu as a function of x that will look something like that, and then at any uh, transition region like this, I will have a marijuana fermion. Now I will have much more than one, and I will need to count the the genesis of the ground state. I will need to count how many operators that commute with the Hamiltonian and commute with one another, they, they exist, and count the, the, the degeneracy properly. I'll do it in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, and I mentioned this, this is a, just kind of a trivial extension of what I said before, but I mentioned this because this is something that you can imagine doing in a lab. 
you, you change the chemical potential by applying a gate voltage. And you, you, you take a wire. We still have a problem with the, the fact that this wire that I talked about before was spin polarized and it wasn't a, you know, the, the, the realization of an experimentalist dream. But, uh, so, but, but uh, as you will see, we can, we can uh, tweak this wire a little bit and make it uh, one that can be done, that can be found in the lab. Uh, uh, and then by, by applying uh, uh, gate voltages in, the, in, in this form, we can uh, generate along the wire as many uh, marijuana modes as, as we want, at least as long as we can make the wire very long. Okay, so so we we uh, uh, have at our disposal a one-dimensional system that uh, uh, can can host several marijuana modes which are stable. Now, uh, that in some sense satisfies the second requirement that we had before uh, for realizing topological quantum computation. I told you we need an, a system with an energy gap, and we need. Uh, 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 degeneracy of the ground state. So now we know how to create a degeneracy of the ground state. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to uh, um, implement unitary transformation by making uh, some parameters change in space or in time. Uh, and we will do that soon, but before that I'd like to uh, you know, liberate us from one dimension and ask what happened. Can we do something like that in two dimensions. So the one dimensional system we had was uh, a 1D lattice. We had a, a hopping a T CI dagger CJ. We had a delta CI dagger CI dagger. And of course the emission conjugates of, of both. And now we'd like to have it in two dimensions. So what, what do we need to do? First of all, of course, we'll make the lattice two-dimensional. It should be isotopic, but since my motion in this direction is far limited than in this one, I didn't make it uh, square. Uh, so we will have now uh, T, C, I, dagger, C, J, hopping term also in this direction. Uh, and we need the hopping. Excuse me, and we need superconductivity. So we need to have some CI dagger, CJ dagger, uh, uh, times some, some if, if this is called, uh, if this, this was the one dimensional thing, I'll call it X, delta X and DX. This will be TY and delta Y. And uh, at least for as long as the system has periodic boundary conditions, I can Fourier transform it and solve it in exactly the same way I had before. And what I will find is that the energy will be again plus or minus square root of uh, uh, mu minus Tx cosine Ka minus Ty cosine K Kxa and cosine Kya squared plus delta squared uh, delta x squared um, uh, sine squared sine squared ka uh, plus delta squared oh 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 le let me do it this way uh, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute it will be delta squared times sine squared kxa plus sine squared kya. Now, this will be, uh, you see that I put here one value of delta. This will be the spectrum when delta y is i times delta x. So the structure will be very similar. It will be a gapped system for, uh, you know, as long as mu doesn't uh, get to the bottom of the band. I think there might be factors of two here. Uh, as, as long as mu doesn't uh, get to the bottom of the band, uh, the gap will not close. Uh, 
Uh, it will close when mu is either at the bottom of the band or at the top of the band. And uh, so I have a gap system and I can ask whether I will have uh, my one modes in this two-dimensional system. It turns out this depends on delta. Uh, delta here is a uniform uh, order parameter, but uh, in principle it doesn't have to be uniform. And what's most, uh, what's most important, it turns out that when delta, delta is a complex order parameter, when delta has a vortex, there is a, a, a zero energy and n equals zero my one mode single and uh, equal zero my one mode at the core of the vortex so uh, how does this come about you know, a superconductor is gapped by the superconductivity. Right, right, right. The vortex, I'm, I'm going to mention that now. So, a superconductor is made gap by the superconductivity, by delta. Now, uh, so, so if, if I want a, a, a zero energy state, if I want a state where the gap closes, I need to have a, a region of space where delta uh, vanishes. Now, of course, it vanishes outside of the superconductor uh, in the vacuum, and that's fine. But it also vanishes in one particular uh, other condition, which is the condition of a vortex. A vortex is a situation where delta is proportional to e to the i theta. And theta is the angle with respect, let's say, to the x-axis. So, uh, so delta of R will be uh, proportional, or, 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 uh, uh, let's say, if, if the vortex is here at the, core, uh, at, the, at the origin, delta of R will be proportional to I, e to the I theta of R. So the phase of delta will have a 2 pi winding as we, go, uh, as we go, in this case, around the origin, or more generally around the core of the vortex. There will be a 2 pi winding. And for a... Uh, an analytic function to have a 2 pi winding, there must, it, its magnitude must vanish. So the magnitude of delta, the magnitude of delta as a function of position will look something like that. Where, where, where position starts from, from zero, or uh, distance from, uh, uh, from the core starts at zero. So delta will have to vanish at the center. Basically, the, uh, think of the vortices in, in, in your bathtub. Uh, it's the same story. It's a, it's a, a circular motion of a, of a fluid here, the superconductor, and it vanishes at the origin, uh, and, and it, it, it uh, forces the other parameter to vanish at the origin. Uh, now, at least uh, to some extent, you can think of the vortex, of the core of the vortex, as a region. You know, I'm, I'm, to make a, a gross uh, simplification, we can think about this, we can approximate it by something like that. We can, we can say, well, the, the vortex is a region where at the center superconductivity vanishes. So there will be states within the gap, within the superconducting gap, because we lost superconductivity. Okay, in a small region, but we lost it. Uh, so, so, so there will be states be below the gap. But it's a small region, and you know, in quantum mechanics, a confined region, there will be zero and uh, zero motion, uh, 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 zero energy uh, fluctuations, and uh, 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 zero point fluctuations, and, and there will, the energy will not necessarily be zero. So you may expect to have uh, states here and under the gap, but not at zero energy. In fact, if you uh, studied superconductivity and solved that particular exercise in Dejean's book, he shows that for an S-wave superconductor, which is what it solves for, uh, uh, it's, it's not just an exercise in his book, but also a piece of work he did, uh, there will be states which are within the gap, but the first one will have like uh, one half h bar omega separation from zero. It turns out for a P-wave superconductor, that's not the case. And this is a P-wave superconductor, we have spinless electrons, 
So uh, here there will be at the core of each vortex one single zero energy mode, one single marijuana fermion. Okay? So I'm, I'm not solving you that Borlubov uh, degen equation for a vortex in a pure wave superconductor. This is uh, uh, something I put in the homework. But, uh, uh, but that's, that's the outcome. There will be a zero energy solution in each vortex, yes. So physically, how would you make this? Uh, how do I get such a superconductor? Yeah, or how do you get such a homophobia? So, um, okay, uh, there are two uh, uh, directions I can go to. Either look for a different system that looks very similar to that, and that's the direction I will describe next time. Or ask around, you know, for a superconductor that's a pure wave superconductor. It is believed, and uh, it's, uh, I'm not, you know, the, the experiments support it reasonably well, that there is such a pure wave superconductor uh, coming out naturally, and this is strontium RU04, and there is such a phase for helium-3, which also forms a spin-polarized superconductor. Uh, to what extent are we confident about these statements? I am not the one to judge. But, but uh, it's something that can happen, you know, um, uh, that such superconductors uh, exist. I'll tell you next time about how to make such superconductors in different contexts, either by uh, you know, going to a completely different direction of the quantum hole effect or by uh, combining some new players in the game, like spin-orbit coupling, which I didn't uh, so far put in. Other questions? Yes. No, nothing. It, it, it came with us to... to ah, ah, okay. No, good question. Now I understood the, the question. Uh, you say maybe on this board I have just a single vortex. Uh, thanks for this question. Uh, uh, it's important. So I, I have just a single vortex. Where's the second zero mode? Okay, now you, you need to tell me what's your geometry. If your geometry is compact, uh, let's say uh, all this system lives on uh, periodic boundary conditions, lives on a uh, torus or a sphere, there will never be a single, uh, a single vortex because a vortex carries a flux of H over 2E and the quantization of the Dirac monopole will force you to have um, uh, an even number of vortices. And I'm, I'm hesitant because I'm trying to remember whether you actually taught me that or not, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> in, in any case, on a compact geometry, there will always be an even number of vortices because of Dirac's condition. Okay, what about an open geometry? In, a, in an open geometry, there can be, you know, one of my colleagues at Weizmann can image, can give you pictures of these vortices, you can give them names, you can count them, and sometimes you get 11. So, so, so suppose that you have uh, uh, three vortices, what, what what you do? If you have four, it's fine, but if you have three, uh, you look around and look for a candidate to help. The only candidate is the edge. So the edge, the bulk is gapped. The edge has to uh, be more subtle, right? Because if there are four, the edge should not be gapless, should not have a zero energy mode. Because if it has one, now we are at five. But if I had three here, there must be one here too. So the spectrum of the edge must have or not have zero energy modes, exactly zero energy modes, depending on a small change in, the, in what happens in the bulk. That tells you that there must be here a gapless mode uh, on the edge whose lowest energy st state will be either very close to zero if there are uh, an even number here, or at zero if there is an odd number. So the presence of vortices here must affect the spectrum of the, of the edge by moving it slightly away from zero or back to zero, depending on the number of vortices. Because other, if, if that doesn't happen, then you lose this parity argument, uh, and, and then and that cannot happen. Uh, yeah? Good. So in the one-dimensional context, are you, are you going to tell us what one has to do experimentally <coughs> isolate in our device the wire from a source of electrons that can singly hop onto the wire and off the wire? Uh, Spoil the... Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, 
I think I'll uh, come to that. Not today. Uh, uh, first, I'll, I'll, switch, I'll describe the spin orbitalization and so on, but yes. Um, and, and that maybe will uh, lead us to believe that realizations which go beyond my one of fermions are better. And that I'm always happy to argue for. Uh, that's something I'm fascinated by. Yeah. Uh, yes. What prevents me from taking a superposition of states which do not have a good clarity? Uh, even an odd. Right. That that's uh, you know you 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 live in a, you, know, in, you are present now in a city where there are divines, uh, divine uh, orders which you should <laughs> which you don't mess up with. This is one of them because. Uh, uh, I, 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 the, the total number of fermions uh, uh, in the universe cannot have a, 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 a parity that's not well defined. I forgot what exactly, uh, what kind of a disaster it will uh, cause, but uh, I think you, you cannot have gauge invariance or something. I don't know, maybe John, maybe you know. But, uh, and so you cannot have a coherent superposition of even and odd. No, you, you you can have a you can you can access from even to odd by having an extra electron from the outside. What what you cannot do is what I what we do here with the delta all all over. It is to uh, put a blind eye to a non-conservation of particle number as long as you conserve parity. Because the uh, because a pair is a boson and a single one is a fermion. And you cannot have a, a coherent state of fermions. That's what the, that's the the divine order you you you're getting into trouble with. Ah, uh, yes. When you are in fine athletics, can you identify vortex? Can can I identify a vortex in a lattice? Yes. So, what what worries you is not the fact that it's finite, but it's the fact that it's not a continuum. Finite, yeah, finite. Yeah. A finite extent. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so uh, the phase of delta can be, uh, uh, you know, can go like that, and and so on. Um, and and the important thing is that if you go very far away from the core and look at the the f uh, f uh, put an arrow for the phase of delta. And go a, a big loop, you'll you'll see a two pi rotation. Uh, yes. Whether they conduct is a different question, but they are gapless. They are gapless. They are gapless. In fact, they are my one uh, edges, so they are neutral. So, so, so what happens is they conduct heat, they don't conduct charge. They don't conduct, they don't conduct charge because they are all made of psi dagger plus psi. So it's an electron in a hole. Uh, but they conduct heat. Uh, in the co so you can ask, for example, on the superconductor I mentioned before, strontium mutinate, whether they were thin. Not to a satisfactory level. Uh, and there, are, there may be reasons for that. Uh, I think we we are more or less on time, right? So uh, I'll continue tomorrow. I'll tell you more about a uh, one-dimensional system of different realizations, two-dimensional systems of different realizations. But most importantly, I'll tell you about doing a, a, a unitary manipulation, unitary transformations on this subspace of ground states to carry out uh, quantum computation. Thank you. <laughs>